So we've got the introductory match between the Japanese and the United States. John Lukey shooting, throws a backhand, right down the middle, nice shot. one nothing. USA won. So we've got the uh, Japanese versus the United States won. These are two competitive teams. It's been a rivalry over 12 years. Definitely the two premier teams here at the uh, WUGC. So the Japanese will be shooting back. Turn around backhand, shot. It's a bag. Josh Twos. Bagged him straight on. So the so Josh Twos was playing the right whip. Turn around left handed backhand shot. Hits the whip. Point. Two nothing USA. Here we go. So the Japanese team getting ready. Eyeing up his man, deciding who he should shoot. Walking back. Warming up, getting ready. American team's ready. Shot coming, turn it on backhand. Fast shot down the center. Tip off of Josh Twos. John Lutke bounced it, was not able to catch it. Point Japan. Two to one. So Josh Tooze shooting a turnaround left-handed backhand, turnaround shot, hits the left whip, popped out, no one's able to catch it. Point USA, 3-1. So Japanese number 10, lining up, it's his third shot, he seems to be the target right now. He's ready, running up to the line, turn around backhand, shot, hits John Lutke in the pocket, score Japan. Scores 3-2, USA, Japan. John Lutke shot down the middle, right down the middle, fast shot, point, 4-2, USA. Um, so number 10 uh, will be shooting again, lining up, turn around backhand, shot hard, straight on bag, Josh Twos, nice catch, number 4 Josh Twos. So it looks like the target for the Japanese team is number 10. Josh Twos lining up. Turn around left handed backhand down the middle. Score. Hit number 10. Knee level. Point. I think if you hang like. I don't think it's cutting out, but I think if you stay a little closer. Okay. Yeah, I think there might have cut out a couple of So the big thing is. Um, so anything that's not obvious is like just, and I'm not a professional ahead, at all, yeah, just my ob observation, just trying to figure out how we can get it. But things like, um, you know, so it's like, you know, they're aiming, hey, usually, going? you know, a team will pick what the weakest player, the weakest thrower, kind of like what, um, you know, what Brian was talking about or, or Mike was saying, if someone the strategy. can't catch but they throw hard, you know, or if they... Yeah. So filler with that? Yeah, like the strategy or, you know, why they throw a turnaround instead of a straight shot, because ultimate players don't throw turnarounds at all. They only throw, like, a regular backhand. So just little things like that that... I like so it. pretend that someone has no idea what they're watching. Okay. Oh! You know, so it's only that where it's like it's short. So the scores. So USA 5, Japan 4. It was a dump shot by John Lutke. Anyone can throw after a dump. 17 shot. Very, very fast shot. Josh Twos is unable to catch that one. So. Because of the dump by the American team, it's a two-point turnaround, a point because of the dump, and then they give it to their best thrower, their best thrower throws, and he scores. 
Josh Two's lining up, looking to shoot number 10 probably. He hit him. This time, he popped it up. It's caught by number 13. So we have a new thrower. First time shooting for number 13. Uncertain of the strategy of the Japanese just yet and who they're targeting. We will find out soon. Hard shot by the Japanese, turnaround backhand, right in the bag zone. The bag zone is from basically your waist to your knees, and those are very easy shots to catch for top level guts players, such as Josh Twos. So he was able to catch it straight on, which is not really easy, and was able to do that relatively uh, simple. Josh running up, turnaround backhand. Shot it right straight down the middle. Number 17, who's actually their best thrower. So strategy-wise, maybe not the best person to hit, but but yet effective. He got his point. So the score is six to five. So it's uh, six five USA Japan. They're switching sides. There's a, there's a slight tailwind. Now the Japanese will have the wind in their face. Obviously with the uh, tailwind, it just makes the shots a lot faster coming towards them. So the wind is to the back of the USA team into the face of the Japanese thrower. Number 17 is definitely the, uh, the best thrower on the Japanese team. He throws a turnaround backhand, the reason being instead of throwing just a walk-up straight backhand. Okay. Instead of throwing just a straight backhand, the extra momentum gained by spinning around makes a much faster shot. Uh, number 17 just threw, score for the Japanese. Score is now tied, 6-6. Josh Twos line up, turn around backhand. Score number 27. Josh Twos aimed at his fingertips. The reason he shot the fingertips much harder. You get it out of the bag zone, very, very difficult to catch a super fast shot at that speed, at the perfect location, right at their fingertips with their outstretched hand. So this will also be the first time that the Japanese thrower number 27 has thrown. Uncertain on his shot. Bobbles. So number, number 27 throws a two finger, throws it down the center, so it's a forehand shot. It rolls a little bit into the wind. It doesn't go vertical, horizontal, uh, vertical with the shot. It's got some good angle. They were able to pop up the shot. Their team was able to bobble it, and they were able to catch the, sh the shot. With Guts Frisbee, you are not able to or allowed to catch uh, with two body parts. In this instance, the disc was bobbled and he was able to pin the disc onto someone else, which is not a trap of two people because it's one person's body that the disc was pushed up against. So one hand and one body part is allowed if it's two different people. You are not allowed to have two body parts on one person. That's considered a trap and that is not a good catch. So Team USA just shot down the middle. They ended up uh, scoring on the Japanese. Looks like he's about to throw a flip over shot. His flip over shot was easily handled, popped up and caught by Josh Twos. Scores 8-6 USA over Japan. So a flip over shot is a shot that starts out um, upside down in your hand and as you rotate through it flips and crosses the line um, turning 180 degrees. Josh Twos shooting a hard left handed backhand, hits his man, 
They pop it up forward, unable to catch it. It looks like Josh's strategy was to hit number 10 again and was able to uh, score on him. Popped it up, the teammates ran after it. They were unable to catch the popped up disc. So, number 10 throwing a flip over again. Goes inverted, flips correctly. Completely flips over. You cannot throw a disc that is 90 degrees or upside down or 90 degrees. The cupola of the disc or the top of the disc needs to be above uh, the playing surface. So the top of the disc needs to be close to 90 degrees, but it cannot reach 90 degrees. Josh, too, shooting left-handed, smokes one down the middle. Hits number 10 at his fingertips. Again, close to an incatchable shot. <laughs> so, once again, great strategy on the American team. They were able to hit their person. Effectively, they've really been able to hit him. USA is up 10-7. So, number 10, getting ready to throw. He is gonna throw his flip over once again. Running up, throw, catch. Very difficult. Very difficult. Straight bag on. Josh's two's brother, Alex Two's number four. Able to catch it straight on. So as a disc is crossing the line and it's not a flat backhand and it's uh it's a spinning disc, it's much more hard to catch. Alex Two shooting the shot, hits it, hits the fingertips. Very nice pop up by number 17, their best offensive player. Uh, pops to the background, they chased it down, were not able to catch it. So the United States, it's 11 to seven, United States winning. Um, strategy wise, strategy wise, number 17 once again has their best throw. They did hit him, they did get the point. Strategy wise, because they're up by four points, they may be attempting just to try to outscore them. They don't care quite as much as whether or not uh, this gentleman can score on them. They understand that they can score on him, and if they exchange points, it's a good strategy once you're up by four points. So, turn around, backhand, fast shot, pop. Hit right down the middle, John Lukey pops it up easily, pops it up, floats down, Ryan Scott catches the disc. So, so strategy and uh, skills of the sport. One of the important things that happens is uh, if you throw the disc and it goes through the other team and they don't catch it, the offense gets a point. If, in this example, Ryan Scott shot, defense popped him up, they catch it, no point is awarded for a clean catch. If someone throws and they throw it outside, too tall or short, then that is not a good shot. That is a point for the de defensive team. The defensive team is then allowed to throw, have their best player throw, and they definitely would have someone fast, their best thrower throwing at them. It's usually a two-point turnaround. So number 27, two finger shot, forehand shot, hits the center, uh, handled red readily by Mark Banghart, number 13, USA. Scores 11-7, USA, Japan. So Mike Banghart has a number of different good shots. Looks like he's looking to do a backhand. Straight power shot, tries to hit the end man. Typically the end man is uh, one of the weaker players. You want to usually have your top players more in the middle because it's a higher probability that people would hit that person. Um, this instance, they hit the outside hand. Good strategy to hit someone's outside hand because if it's, it sprays away, it's very difficult for the rest of the team to get over to it and help them. In this case, he didn't need help. He just caught it straight on himself. So. Japanese getting ready. Again, turnaround backhand, hard shot, hits Mike Banghard, popped up, bobbled. 
John Lukey catches it. Score remains 11-7 USA. So some very, very interesting uh, strategies. I think the Japanese are trying to decide who they should be going at. Uh, John Lukey running up to the line. Throws a, an ace. John Lukey just shot a fast, fast shot. So fast that no one was able to get a hand on the shot. That's called an ace. So if it's an ace, so for, for an ace, uh, no one is, uh, whoever it uh, passes through, that person is required to shoot back. The, in this tournament, the defensive team decides uh, which person it passed by, whether it was inside their fingertip to fingertip, decides who was aced. In this case, it was number 17. Again, their best thrower, turnaround backhand, shot. So his turnaround backhand was short, so he dumped the shot away. So instead of being the best thrower, getting a point, he threw it short, which now, instead of receiving a point, the USA team received a point. So now they will be giving it to one of their best throwers, potentially their best thrower, Mike Banghart. Mike Banghart lining up. He's got about three very, very good shots. Turnaround backhand, two finger, thumber, and I guess his flip over is not bad either. Let's see what he throws today. It looks like a turnaround backhand coming fast, smoking. Ace. A shot on number four, eye level, no hand on it. I like this. <laughs> and they know where to stand. So the score 14 to 7. Japanese having a little discussion, trying to decide who are they going to shoot. Who is the, the person that they should be going after that they feel cannot catch their disc and they are able to catch them. Number four shoots the outside hand, perfect location. Hits the outside hand, but it's in the bag zone. Alex Tuz catches it readily. <laughs> So the Japanese continue to try to figure out who is that person that they can score on, get a point, and then they catch them back and uh, repeat as necessary. Time's running out. Oh, Alex Tuz throws a backhand very hard down the middle. Attempt for a catch, almost bagged, slips out of his hand because of the speed, drops down to the ground, point USA. So the score is 15-7, USA adds up to 22 on 11s and multiplications of 11. Excuse me, they're can switching. I take one this just to see what is the... Absolutely. So it's, uh, so the score is... Uh, it's the first time that I watched Oh, no, this. no, please, please. So, so the score is 15-7. Um, to 7. Japanese are really trying to figure out who they should, uh, what is going to be their strategy. If they don't change their strategy, they're sure to lose. It is a one game match. So they need to figure out who their target's going to be. The benefit for the Japanese right now is they do have a the wind to their back. It's estimated, you know, 10 mile an hour, 12 mile an hour wind, and um, certainly it will help the situation. Looks like the United States decided to switch their team up potentially because of their lead. They put in two new players and they put them into the middle, which is higher probability that he will be shooting them. Let's see what happens. So number nine, Japanese, they will be shooting. Turn around backhand, hard shot. They hit John Lukey. Uh, point, Jap 
No, no. It looks like they hit uh, Tanner Beckman, the new insert into the game, number two. So Tanner Beckman, he's the youngest one on the American team. A high school kid out of Appleton, Wisconsin. Runs up to line, two finger shot, hits. So they stopped it at the line dead. A little bit of bobble, got it under control. And number 27 will be shooting back. It looks like because they inserted someone new, the Japanese may be uh, seeing whether Tanner Beckman uh, will be their target or not. Uh, one will find out uh, very soon. He's lining up, he's looking, trying to figure out who his target's going to be. Number 27, walking up. Uh, two finger shot, shoots. Oh, he misses by one spot. Uh, he shoots Mr. Jackson, number 10. There's a website. Strategy wise, looked like they went after Tanner Beckman. They missed their man. They were one person over. Unsuccessful in their throw and he was bagged. Backhand shot, popped up, hit number four, popped up number 17, their best thrower catches the disc. Americans are trying to figure out the strategy, a little discussion on the sideline, what to do. Looks like they're going with the same lineup. I'm predicting that the Japanese will go down the middle at Tanner Beckman again. Turn around backhand, hard shot, fingertips, blazing speed, perfect location. 15 to 9 USA. So the tailwind is really kicking up. There's a lot of firepower. So. Talk a little bit about the IFT and how they used to be a couple hundred teams. Get that in there. So Tanner Beckman running up to the line, two finger hard shot, down the middle, scores, scores on their center player, number nine. So the, so the USA team, 16-9. So the American teams uh, got a lot of different players, mostly Appleton Assassins played together in many, many tournaments. They've added two Boomtown players, two players also from uh, Albuquerque. Japanese getting ready to throw, number nine, shooting down the middle. Hard shot, score, Japan. So the, the sport of Guts Frisbee originated uh, 1958. There's a picnic in Eagle River, Michigan. Hard shot, Ryan Scott popped up. They were unable to handle it. So the origins of the sport of Guts Frisbee was a picnic type event. People were playing frisbee with one another, and then it got a little more uh, aggressive, competitive as things tend to be, and they decided to throw the disc harder and harder at each other. So as they continued to do that, it eventually turned into a tournament, and they, they've had They've had 59 years of international frisbee tournaments located up in Calumet, Michigan. So score goes back to 1711 USA. USA's got the disc.
So after the original IFT championships, there's been a number of other tournaments. Marquette, Michigan, the U.S. Nationals uh, is one of the more popular ones. They used to have over 5,000 people attend. $5 entry uh, for fans. They'd have a couple of bands, uh, great entertainment at a local s ski hill. And uh, they had a hundred teams that would compete against each other. The numbers for Guts Frisbee in terms of teams is certainly not at that level, but uh, it, there is certainly a lot of international interest. We're finding more and more expansion in Asia. Uh, there's a lot more interest in this tournament uh, from different ultimate teams, and there's a big uh, influence in Europe right now of uh, Guts Frisbee. So we're really looking forward to seeing you know, the, the continued growth of this fun sport guts frisbee. John Lukey, hard shot, backhand, wind blows it away. Wind blows away. So when you're shooting a backhand, you try to hit the outside person on the left hand side that you're facing. When it hits them, it rotates away from their outside hand and again the team cannot help them. The wind is uh, pushing the disc away. It's also pushing it to the side away from that uh, receiving defensive player. Scores 19-12, USA number nine, Japan getting ready, shoot down, turn around, backhand, shot, popped up, floats to the backfield, no one's able to catch the disc, 19-13. So there's been a lot of interest in Asia. The Japanese hold their annual event. They have the Japanese Open is one of the tournaments. There's the Asiatic Tournament too, which had a good turnout in the uh, Asia, Southeast Asia region. John Lukey running up, straight backhand. Scores right down the middle. So the reason John decided to run up to the line and throw a straight backhand rather than a turnaround backhand is more for precision. Turnaround backhand, uh, although it generates more angular momentum and speed, it's not as accurate. John wanted to make sure he hit his man, was able to do that. Score, United States wins 21-13. I just picked up on that. <laughs> so rewinding backwards, <laughs> score 20, 13. Is that a reprieve? <laughs> Number nine, Japanese has been seeing a lot of action. Once again, we'll be throwing, turn around backhand, shot. Hits John Lukey. Appears that the two of them are playing catch. Score, Japan. Twenty fourteen game point. So John Lukey walking up, throws a forehand shot, precision. So, I, so I'm here with uh, Josh Tews, John Lukey of the USA One team. Uh, they just completed their match against their game against the Japanese team, and uh, wanted to you know congratulate both of you, uh, John. You you played very well. Well, you both played well. You Thank you played you. well too. <laughs> but especially John, uh, I seen that you had a lot of action, shooting back and forth. Looked like one of your targets was uh, number ten and number nine. Seems like yes. you were very accurate in doing that. Um, just wanted to ask you, uh, you know, what your prospects are. Not only how well you did this game, but into the future. We know that there's a lot of competition with the Japanese. Certainly the USA One team and the Japanese are the two premier teams here today. So you know, congratulations on the game and uh, you know, 
What was uh, what was some of your thoughts as far as how the match went? Uh, I think when we started, we knew that Japan obviously plays phenomenal defense, and uh, we knew that they would score some and we would score. So we just had to step up on defense and play a little bit better D. Because if we have the better D, then we'll win. We can win for sure. Uh, we practice hitting our guy a little bit because we know come down to it, we'll have to pick a specific guy. They may have not had, you know, all of their final later day starters in so we just started picking guys and hitting that spot which is why number 10 Good. and John I know there's a little bit of back and forth with you and uh, you know some of their target players uh, what, what was your thoughts on things um I think they were just trying to hit the line trying to get a spot hit their man and then they were trying to just kind of spread it out a little bit try and see everyone's shot on our team try and get a view of how everyone was throwing and it just ended up coming towards me some of the times so just felt like it was just a opportunity for me to get to see most of their shots and everything so so I'm sure some of the folks back home in Appleton Wisconsin want to hear something any anything you want to say to uh, your fans back home you guys are awesome I uh, wish you were all here we could use some lawn chairs just yep. plenty of space over here you know uh, mom dad you're the greatest love you uh, John, what do you got? Uh, Brian Twos, Genie Twos. Yeah. Thanks for supporting us. Uh, my family as well, family and friends. Awesome of you guys to support us. Like Josh said, it'd be awesome to have fans here. More fans. Yeah, we got plenty but of fans. Yeah. It's going to be a good weekend. <laughs> So, thank you for uh, spending some time with us. I know you're plenty busy. You want to, you know, warm up and uh, get ready for your next match. And uh, congratulations, both of you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Sounds good. Thank you. So we just completed watching the match of the USA one versus Japanese team. Uh, very, very tough competition back and forth. You can tell the skill level on both teams is just fantastic. Uh, this was not the best players. They will be saving these players until the actual 